Welcome to the session on getting started with Kaggle. Which datathon is hosted on Kaggle platform? Kaggle is an online platform where machine learning engineers and data scientists can hone their data science skills by participating in the competitions hosted in the platform. Kaggle also contains a rich repository of notebooks and data sets. If you do not have a Kaggle account already, you can create a new account by using your Gmail ID or Yahoo or Facebook or any other email ID. Once you successfully create a Kaggle account, you can also fill in other details like your name, the city, and you can also link it to your social media profiles. And there is also an option to fill in your bio. There are four important sections in Kaggle, which is linked to progression system. They are the competitions, data set, notebooks, and discussions. In this session, we will be covering each of these sections in detail. But before that, if you have not already registered for WIDS Datathon 2022, head on to widsconference.org/datathon.html and click on the register now and fill in your details. You will get a notification email when the competition launches on Jan 6, 2022. WITS Datathon is an in-class competition, which means the competition does not offer ranking points and it also does not count towards tires. This is the competition page of WITS Datathon 2021. I'm going to walk you through several tabs in the competition page to familiarize you with the platform. The first tab is the overview. Overview tabs in general in Kaggle contain several tabs. The first tab is the description. The description contains a brief introduction to the problem statement, the background of the problem statement, the organizing team of the competition, and also the sponsors for the competition. The next sub tab is the evaluation tab, which contains the evaluation metric, which is used to evaluate the solutions to the competition. The prices tab contains the price details for the winners of the competition. With Statathon is a two-phase competition, the phase one winners will be decided based on the leaderboard ranking in Kaggle, whereas phase two winners will be evaluated based on research paper submissions. A detailed instructions and information about the WITS Datathon phase two is present in WITS Datathon phase two tab. In addition to all of it, you have frequently asked questions with regards to WITS Datathon compiled in FAQ tab. Pay extra attention to Datathon timeline tab where you have all the important deadline dates. All the timelines mentioned here are UTC time zone. The next tab is the data tab. Data tab contains detailed information about the file descriptions. And each of these files can be downloaded individually by clicking on them and clicking the download icon. Or you can download it all at a single go using the Kaggle API. If you wish to execute your solutions locally in your local environment, you may want to download Kaggle data set. The next tab is the code tab. Several Kagglers throughout the competition will share their knowledge 
in the form of competition notebooks. If you wish to share your knowledge with other catalysts, you can create a new notebook using the new notebook button here. You can edit the default name, which is as a part of your new notebook creation. Currently, Kaggle supports a couple of languages, which is Python and R. You can choose the language which you are comfortable with. There are three accelerators which are supported currently. One is CPU, which is the default accelerator, GPU, and TPU. Read the competition rules to find out if internet is allowed or not. Based on the rules, you can disable and enable the internet using this option. You also have additional features like you can schedule your notebook on a particular date, or you can run your notebook at a periodic intervals. And you also have a feature called code help. If you need code with regards to any of the concepts, you can type it here and you will get several options. For example, if I require code related to TPU, I type TPU there. I get a lot of options. And when I click on the first option, I get the code statements, how to use TPU in TensorFlow notebooks. This might come across a handy feature, particularly to the beginners. This is my notebook interface, and I can delete a particular cell using the delete cell option here. There are two cells which I can create. One is the code cell, and the other is markdown. Markdown is generally used for comments and descriptions. And code cell is where you type your important codes and solutions to the competition. I'll write a simple Python print statement. And if I wish to run this code cell, I can click on this play button here or on the play button above here or on the run menu. There are several options for running my notebook. I can run the current cell or I can run all of the cells at a single go or run the previous cell or run the cell after. If I wish to use any secret user credentials, particularly if I'm using external APIs for experiment tracking like weights and biases, or if I'm upgrading to Google Cloud Notebooks, then mine might use user ID and password. Such credentials can be stored using Kaggle secrets option. By default, all your notebooks are private. You can explicitly make it public using this public option here. Your public notebooks will be released under Apache 2.0 license. You can add collaborators by clicking on add collaborators option. You can also add tags by clicking on add tags option where you can give meaningful tags. Click on the save option, save version. There are a couple of options. One, you can just save your changes made to the notebooks using quick save option. If you wish to save and come at the notebook, you can go for save and run on option. You have advanced setting operations and you can decide if you want to save your output or if you do not wish to save your output, you can also configure the accelerator you want here. Once you have done all, the, all of it, click on save and your notebook will start executing. After the notebook section, you have the discussion forum. 
If you have any queries with regards to the competition data or Kaggle or machine learning in general, you can create a new discussion topic using the new topic button here. You can give a meaningful title to your query and you can paste your query here. You can also add tags. And when you click on publish topic, it will become public. Several Kagglers throughout the competition will reply to your query. You can also do the same by responding to other people's queries. The next tab is the leaderboard tab. There are two leaderboards, one is the public and the private. Public leaderboard in general is evaluated only on a certain portion of test data. For example, in Wits Datathon 2021, it was evaluated only on 70% of the test data. The remaining 30% of the test data was evaluated after the competition ended. So the private leaderboard will be visible only after the competition ends. Fine, private leaderboard is your final standing on the leaderboard. It will decide who the real winners are. The next tab is the rules tab. Pay a lot of attention to the rules tab. If you are a beginner, I would recommend going through this tab cautiously. In addition to going through this tab, I would also recommend going through Kaggle community guidelines. A couple of Kaggle community guidelines, which I would like to highlight are, do not have multiple Kaggle accounts and do not share any solutions or tips and tricks with people outside your team. Violation of both these rules will end up your account being blocked in some cases or your team being removed from the leaderboard. The team tab is where you can form team members. By default, your team name will be your Kaggle profile name. You have a provision to change this name to the name which you like. Type the name which you like and click on save team name. Every team will have only one single leader who has permissions to choose the final two solutions for the competition. If you wish to merge with another team, Type the name of the team here. The request merge button will be enabled. Once you click on it, the merge request will be sent to them. Once they accept the merge request, they'll be listed as your team members. In addition to this, you can also accept the request sent by other teams to you. And it will be popping up in teams proposing merge section. In order to make submissions to your competitions, you have to click Summit Predictions button here. The couple of commonly uh, used formats for submissions are code-based submissions where you submit a notebook. If the competition explicitly calls for code-based submissions, your submissions will be in the form of Kaggle notebooks. And some competitions also expect submissions in the form of CSV files. In that case, you can click on this upload file option and upload your CSV file and click on make submissions. With this, you would have successfully made submissions to your Kaggle competition. If you are a complete beginner to Kaggle and data science, I would highly recommend going through Kaggle courses section. This section contains a lot of micro courses, which are very important to get started with Kaggle. All of these courses are free of cost, and you also get a certificate upon successful completion. And there are also more hands-on focused micro courses. 
The other sections which you can go through in Kaggle are the documentation. If you are stuck in Kaggle or not knowing to use a certain feature or if you require help, I would recommend head on to Kaggle documentation and go through these pages very carefully. You have detailed documentation for competitions, data sets, and notebooks. Kaggle also has a progression system. The moment you create a Kaggle account, you will be a novice. And once you satisfy these criteria, you will become a contributor. And every progression level has a certain criteria which you need to meet to progress to the next level. We've covered the most important topics with regards to getting started with Kaggle. I'm wishing everyone the very best for WIDS Datathon 2022. Happy Kaggling!